Matthew Miller is running for state senate in Michigan, 18th district over there. And he's got a unique story, he's a young guy. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's good to be here. All right, Matthew, how old are you? I'm 22. 22 years old, wow, Jesus mm -hmm. Lord mercy. Are you still in college? I am. Interesting, what college are you in? Currently, I'm at WCC, it's Washington Community College in Ann Arbor, or Ypsilanti, actually, Michigan. I have plans to transfer to University of Michigan. All right, well, if you could help them learn how to shoot, that would be very helpful. Um, <laughs> I know they made it in the championship game, but can you make a three? I think I could have made more threes. Anyway. I, I think they're better than I am. <laughs> I hear you on it. See, he's an honest guy already. Um, I'm guessing since you're 22 years old, you haven't been corrupted yet. Uh, so <laughs> no no corporate uh, PAC money for you, right? Not a penny. Of course, um, it's it's a state senate uh, race. Uh, you're, uh, the incumbent there is Rebecca Warren. She's a Democrat. Uh, mm -hmm. What what party are you with, Matthew? I'm running with the Democrats. So this is going to be a primary against her. Yep. So why primary a Democrat in that in that particular state senate? Well, Rebecca Warren is termed out. Our state constitution has limited her terms. So I'm running against three other individuals who want this seat. Uh, there's a current state rep, Jeff Irwin, uh, County Commissioner Michelle Dietrich, and a CEO in New Jersey, Andrew. Okay, and what's wrong with those guys? Why do you need to beat them? So, first, I, mean, I guess we'll start top down. You know, we'll start with who's been in politics the longest. Um, Mr. Irwin has been in politics in Michigan for about 20 years. Um, he's got a very long, tall standing resume. Unfortunately, I mean, he's a really nice guy. He seems like that uncle you never had. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but really getting to know him was was great. Like I said, fantastic guy. Starting through his campaign finance reports, you start finding he's accepted corporate money from various uh, groups such as Blue Cross Blue Shield. I think we counted something like twenty thousand dollars in the last six years or eight years. Um, next one down um, is uh, Miss Michelle Dietrich. Um, Michelle is a county commissioner. She worked on Bernie Sanders staff. And I was last December, I was actually I was really excited um, about her campaign. And I sat down with her on December 6th at a big B in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And after talking with her for a while, I, I guess to be completely honest, I was bored. Um, none of the answers to the questions she gave me really inspired me. I didn't feel any passion behind her words. I felt I guess I said it, I felt bored. Um, the next one is Anuja. Now, see, I didn't know Anuja was even running when I decided to go into this. Um, Anuja is just, I think she's a great woman, but she seems a bit, a bit foolhardy, I guess, on certain topics. <laughs> Matthew, you're taking me for a roller coaster ride. You know, you start out with uh, like really nice compliments about your opponents, and I'm like, he hasn't been in politics long. And then you lay down the hammer with foolhardy. <laughs> okay, why? Why is she foolhardy? In your opinion, we had a uh, a forum on February twenty fourth held by the Progressive Caucus of the Michigan Democratic Party, and each of us had to talk about one piece of policy we'd want to bring to the table. The very first thing we do when we got to the Senate, um, I don't remember what Michelle said. She said something along the lines of, um, "If she had a magic wand, she'd fix everything." But you know, that's not how it works. I can oh. I can only remember what she talked about. Um, Jeff mentioned something about restructuring our state's income tax from a flat tax rate, things like 4.25 percent, um, to a gradient tax rate, which would be wonderful. Um, and Anusha talked about banning bump stocks, which is great, but I feel like that's not the most important issue facing our state. My my piece was affordable education. There's a huge gap in Michigan's job market right now where we have a lot of jobs where folks can, you know, they're too overqualified with a college degree and underqualified if they're a high school graduate. But expanded vocational training, expanded community college education would help these folks fill that job gap. So Matthew, you know, you said when you were talking to one of the other candidates, you were bored. So well, what drives you? What are you passionate about? Why you're in the middle of going to college? Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of things on your plate. You're thinking of transferring to another college that can't shoot straight. Uh, can you tell I had money on Michigan? Uh, anyway, 
<laughs> so why uh, get uh, all riled up and decide to run for state senate? I see it. I don't talk about this as a, a way to like earn pity. It's just a matter of fact, you know. I mean, it's eight eleven right now, and it's a matter of fact. I grew up in the foster system. I've been around the state my whole life, and I just, you know, I I've seen how much of an impact bad policy can make in a person's life. I spent twelve years in it, so I've already had kind of a, a chip on my shoulder when it comes to this. The twenty sixteen elections was huge for everyone in this country. I mean, it really was, there's no way around that. And so this is the first time I'm eligible by our state's constitution to be involved, you know, at the, you know, as a candidate, instead of as, you know, someone to go knock doors or make phone calls or whatever. It's my first time to actually put my name out there and say, this is what I want. And I realized that, you know, when I launched my campaign, that it is about what I want. It's about the fact that in Michigan, a black man will get locked up five to six times more than his white counterpart. In Michigan, we have schools in Detroit and Flint with rotting floorboards in their gyms while schools in Ann Arbor are expanding. And that's great. I'm, I'm glad that you know the folks in Ann Arbor are getting high quality education, but it shouldn't stop just there. It should be for the entire state. Just because the people around the Ann Arbor area or the Grand Rapids area make more money doesn't mean that the students in the Cadillac and Traverse City area deserve a less or lesser education. And so I've been looking around and I've been seeing just how much injustice there is in the state and in the world. And I don't want to sit by and keep watching anymore. Somebody has to pick up the flag and keep carrying it and I chose to do so. All right, Matthew, one more thing. You said that you spent 12 years in the foster care system and that's what motivated you to want to change things. So what was wrong with the foster care system and how would you change it? So. I went to the foster care system at five years old. Um, I went through six major placements, a lot of small uh, placements in between four different school systems. And the biggest thing that I remember, the biggest issue that I had was, or two biggest issues, was overworked caseworkers that had caseloads so large they couldn't focus on the kids that they had. The second one was when I was 17 years old and I was released from the system, I was released about two months before my 18th birthday. I basically got a boot in the ass was out the door. I really had no, no idea where I was going after that. I, I went to Olivet College just south of Lansing. I went to a, a field that I didn't like. And I mean, a lot of kids do that. But when it came time for me to turn and ask advice, there was no one for me to turn to. Um, when I got out of the system, I did, or out of all that, I found my biological family out in North Dakota. I moved out there and realized, you know, this... Every step I was making was not the step in the direction that I needed to be going. I didn't know what the direction was, but I knew that I didn't have the advice and the, the parenting, to be honest, to know where I was supposed to go. So one thing that I want to see happen in the state is an expansion of affordable housing to include aged out foster children, um, an expansion of financing to be able to hire on more social workers. So that way they're not stretched so thin across so many different foster care cases. Yep, makes sense. Uh, well, you are a unique story, no question about that. Uh, so I want to give everybody the links as we always do. Uh, if you want to help out uh, Matthew, MatthewMillerSenate.com is the website. And if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook later, you know the links are down below. So click on those and, and check it out. All right, Matthew, uh, good luck in the race. Um, and I appreciate your passion and, and your wanting to get into the fight as soon as you can. Uh, that's the kind of spirit I love. Thank you, man. Thank you so much.